Hey everybody, Taylor and Sarah here. We're gonna show you our ambulance that we've converted into a camper. So um, the way I came across this thing was one day uh, my truck was stolen while we were living out in Dallas and uh, went about nine months without a vehicle and Sarah uh, finally was getting frustrated with me. It's getting tired of toting me around and I was getting tired of riding the train to work every single day. So uh, ended up going to a couple of different auctions and finally got fed up and went to an auction that had a whole bunch of vehicles and said, I'm coming to this auction, I'm gonna buy a vehicle, I'm not leaving here without a vehicle. And Sarah agreed with me on that uh, fact as well. And so uh, this was actually the last item to roll across the auction lot. And I said, I'm not leaving without it. And so I ended up buying it and paid $10,000 for the entire thing. Um, it's a 2011 Ford F-350 chassis diesel. Uh, had 110, 115,000 miles on it when, uh, when we first got it. We've probably put about 40 or 50 on it since we've had it. Um, the whole, the conversion cost about $500 for us to put into it and to do it. Um, did everything, did everything ourselves as well. So uh, looking at the inside here, it's still a pretty standard cab, uh, just F-350. We changed out the seat co covers because they had a couple of rips in them. Got them from Cabela's, really like these Cabela's um, uh, tactical seat covers. Um, the only thing really different about it is the seat covers and this instrument panel right here that has switches and things that are for uh, running the generator and the lights and things of that nature. It has a backup camera and also I can see the inside uh, of the box as well on this camera uh, to see if there's like a, if my load back there is shifting or anything like that as well. Um, One, oh, real quick, uh, there is an alarm system in here as well with sensors. Yep, so all, this, all the cabinets, everything uh, has an alarm system on it to where it actually calls me on my cell phone if anybody messes with it so I can actually go do something about it rather than just making a bunch of noise um, the insurance company actually made me take all of the uh, emergency lights off of it and then it also had striping along it you can see where kind of the, some of the adhesive we didn't quite get it all off but it had a big red stripe down it and then all the red and blue lights on it so I took all those off so they would actually insure me as well uh, it does still have the uh, infrared light on the front there that changed the street changes the street lights from red to green um, it doesn't really work in the area around here but down in San Antonio where it came from it actually still works there we tried that out not too long ago <laughs> Um, we don't actually do that very often. Um, in this front compartment here, this is actually what I love about this thing the most out of anything is the all the compartments and storage it has on it. So originally this is where the uh, big uh, medical oxygen tank was. It was a, one of those big long tall uh, tanks that was li lying in here on its side and it had a big hose system and all that in there. I actually took that out, changed it out for a propane tank. We use these standard five gallon propane tanks because we, if we're out on the road, I only want to carry one of them at a time because they take up so much room. But if we're out on the road and we happen to run out, I can just take it to any grocery store or Lowe's or wherever and just trade it out real easy. So um, keep camp chairs in here. There's two or three camping chairs in there. Real quick to kind of elaborate on what you were saying, you'll notice the door right behind Taylor is actually vented as well. Yeah, it's vented and there's also, I also have a propane uh, leak alarm in here as well. So if there is ever a leak. Um, I think most actually uh, you're not really supposed to have a propane tank in an enclosed space but it is it, this is enclosed it's vented right here and there is a propane alarm in there as well um have a little camp stove that we keep as well so we can fold our little camp stove and roast marshmallows or cook a meal or whatever if we're out at a park um keep a few medical supplies in here aed uh, and some medical supplies in case we happen to need them while we're out on the road this compartment right here sarah calls this is not a step and you'll see why this is not a step. It uh, is not a step. Uh, so uh, I keep, this is kind of our tool compartment. I keep a nice little assortment of tools. Every time we take this, this truck out and uh, you know, we'll come back, we'll take some stuff out that we didn't use and we'll put some stuff back in that we wish we would have had. And this tool compartment is one of our lifesavers. We actually had a situation, we were in a national park out in New Mexico uh, middle not, of nowhere. Not National Park. It was the Badlands. It was, a, it was a Badlands Park. I don't remember what the name of it exactly was. But we got off on this trail that was a little bit too rough for us. And the actual U-bolts that hold the back axle on broke off. And so the whole back axle was just you know flopping in the wind basically and so i ended up welding it uh back to the frame with off the batteries of the truck and uh at least we were able to limp out of that and some welding that, rods yeah yeah some welding was able to weld it back on and we were able to limp back out of that park until i could take it to a frame shop and get it fixed professionally um full set of dewalt uh, 18 volt tools in here we use those frequently um i also have a impact driver for changing out tires a uh, nice little tool set here was the, just a wide assortment of different things um I keep tape, uh, Gorilla Tape, which is a lifesaver, uh, fuses, extra nuts and bolts and screws, things that we might use while we're out on the road. This compartment's just got a random assortment, some welding rods, hammers, 
Uh, I keep some PVC pipe glue for doing plumbing repairs around the house, and then also some like WD-40 and some uh, engine starting fluid, which comes in handy. Uh, keep a couple of tow chains and some locks in here in case we want to lock up like our bicycles or a four-wheeler chain into a tree if we want to, you know, be able to, you know, sleep at night without worrying about somebody stealing it. Um, and that's, that's basically what we keep in there. This compartment right here is where all the electrical components are for the uh, the lights and the relays for all the generator and the electrical. There's a 5,000 watt um, inverter in here as well that'll run the, the 12 volt off the truck while it's running and I can run 120 volts inside or I can run the generator. There's a 5,500 watt Onan gas generator uh, that I can run 120 volts off of as well. Um, the whole chassis is on an air suspension, so um, I've actually rigged up an air hose to that suspension so that I can I have 120 psi to this air hose to where I can run, uh, you know, fill up tires or run a small air tool if I need to, and uh, that has come in extremely handy, not only for filling our own tires on our vehicle, but if there's somebody else that's in distress or we have like our four-wheeler has a flat tire it gets, I keep a patch kit in here with the, the patch tires, and we've been able to help several people with that as well as, you know, help ourselves out. Um, yeah, that's really about all that's in there. This right here is going to be our battery storage compartment for our solar panels on top, which we plan on adding on here before too long. I do have a couple of batteries in there that I keep nice and charged up for uh, either jumping ourselves if we happen to run our batteries on our truck down for some reason, or uh, it's handy to just, without having to open up the hood, I can just hook onto these batteries and jump somebody else as well. Or uh, if we happen to need to weld something as on there too. Um, eventually, I will do plan on putting a rack on top with our solar panels. Uh, we do have a two-person uh, Old Town kayak that we put up there that uh, I strap down with these um, brackets that I put on, and that way we can take our kayak with us in, in the warm months. And you know, if we just see a lake or a stream, hey, we can pull over, back the ambulance up, throw the kayak in the water, and stay the whole night and do whatever we want to do while we're out there. Um, it is a diesel truck. But there is the gas fill up over here as well. There's a, I believe the diesel's 40 gallons and the gas, I have 15 gallon tank underneath there for running the generator. And I can run that generator for four or five days just on that, that 15 gallon tank. Um, this is kind of one of our big storage areas here. We keep shoes up here. This actually passes through. There's a sliding door that passes through onto the inside to where we can take our shoes off inside and just throw them in here so we don't have stinky shoes inside. Or we can take them off out here and throw them in here if they're muddy and things of that nature. Uh, I keep on the bottom down here our water hose for filling up our, our water tank inside as well as our uh, cord, uh, extension cord for plugging into shore power or if I want to turn the generator on and I need to run some power tools or something out here on the farm I can do that as well. Uh, just some uh, towing, towing things down in there, pins and uh, tow straps and things of that nature. I did add on a um, ball hitch onto the bottom of the ambulance for pulling trailers. And then also there's a port of power jack with some bottle jack attachments in there. That has come in very handy. So rather than having, you know, one of those cheap little uh, tire changing jacks, I went ahead and did the full port of power with the, there's some 20 ton jacks in there. I can lift this whole ambulance up off the ground, no problem. I keep the boards to, you know, support the jack as well as putting under tires if we get in this tight, uh, you know, in a slippery spot, we need the, need the boards. Back of the ambulance here, we still have the emergency reflective striping. You can see where I started trying to take it off and it was really challenging. So I just decided it was a lot of motivation just to leave it because it was so hard to take off. Uh, we actually, I'm glad we did leave a lot of it because it's very reflective. It makes the truck very easy to find with a flashlight in the dark at night. It, I mean, it lights up like a Christmas tree back here when you hit it with some lights. And I also like the, uh, the reflectiveness because it makes it easier to see from behind if we pull over on the side of the road or anything like that so we don't get hit by another vehicle. Shore power? Yeah, uh, so, uh, this is the connection, electrical connection for running shore power, so we can plug into the grid, run the whole ambulance off of that, or like I said before, we can just turn the generator on, and I can run electrical off of the, you know, go in the opposite direction. Here, here's our camera as well, our backup camera. Yeah, backup camera, because one of the issues with the ambulance is I can't see anything behind me without that backup camera. It's like driving a box truck, so yeah, that comes in, comes in very handy. Sarah, Sarah actually drives quite a bit as well. Yeah, I do, and it would be impossible. <laughs> uh, I'd like to eventually put LED lights all the way around, uh, for where I can just flip the switch on the inside, it lights up the whole outside. It does have these 120 volt uh, big uh, floodlights on either side, but you have to be running the generator or be plugged into the uh, shore power for those to run. And that's kind of a pain. I want them to be 12 volt uh, LEDs all the way around, like some light bars and things like that. Um, back compartment back here, this is about a six foot long compartment that has the backboard in it for the EMS crew. I have a set of ramps here for loading 
loading up our four wheeler or if I you know, happen to buy something at an auction that I want to load up back there. We've got ramps, fishing poles are in here as well. And then whenever we have our kayak, our kayak paddles fit in here very nicely too. We'll open up the back here. So the, both the doors open up. And so we have a big giant workspace. We are still building our uh, shipping container home. So this is my primary work vehicle for that. So I can load up lots of you know, uh, building materials and whatever we need to load up, I can still use it as a work table. It's got a durable vinyl floor in it that uh, is easy to just mop it up and no big deal. It did originally have the brackets and things in it for the uh, stretcher to go in here. I took all of that out, so it's got a nice flat surface. Uh, I can turn on the rear lights from the switch back here, as well as the whole ambulance is, like I said, was on an air suspension. The whole thing will squat down and it'll squat down real low to the ground, so it makes it that much easier to load things up as well. Moving around to the other side here, I have the 5500 watt Onan gas generator, which is awesome. And that did come standard with the ambulance. It did actually, yeah, it came with the ambulance, didn't have to add it on or anything like that. Diesel exhaust fluid, fill up point. This compartment over here, uh, we added in, this is kind of our plumbing utilities area. Um, it's got the compressor for the air suspension down here. I've got a propane tankless water heater that runs our uh, kit, our sink inside, as well as we have a little shower outlet out here that if we wanted to, uh, if we were out, you know, getting muddy or uh, don't have an opportunity to go to like, a, I have, like we have a gym membership where we usually take our showers or we go to like a community center or a truck stop or something like that when we're out on the road. But if we get in a pinch and we need to take a shower, we've got hot water out here as well. We can just shower off, rinse your, you know, dirty shoes off, rinse off, clean fish or whatever we need to do while we're out. And like uh, one not too long ago, we were you know, water, white water rafting in a place that you know, didn't have any facilities. So we just came back and showered. Yeah. 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 Actually, Taylor wants to build a shower curtain around them. Mm. Yep, so I, I, my, one of my plans in the near future as well is to build some kind of uh, shower curtain right here so we can actually stand out here have a curtain and have some privacy and actually have a full shower because it kind of gives people a show when you're out here showering. If, if, uh, and we don't ever shower naked. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to go in first. Okay. So Sarah's going to uh, do the tour of the inside, but I'm going to show you just a couple of things as well uh, over here in our kitchen area. So this originally was this, everything in the ambulance is aluminum. It is insulated. It's got about an inch and a half of spray foam insulation. So it does stay pretty temperature stable back here. Uh, the entire frame's aluminum and the side walls are kind of a vinyl plastic. Um, so it's actually a pretty light box back here and uh, real nice and strong as well. It is rated to have a, be able to handle a rollover accident. Uh, this was aluminum shelving all right here. I took all the face plating off of it, put on these doors and uh, gave us a little cabinetry and then cut out the shelf right here to put in our uh, kitchen stove. Uh, this little propane stove is our source of heat whenever we need a heat heat source back here. We just turn it on low, open up the open up the oven door here and just it warms this whole back thing up nice and toasty. We do have a, a carbon monoxide sensor in here as well as a propane uh, flammable gas sensor as well. Uh, two burner top. Um, and then we also have our, our sink with hot and cold water. The switch to turn the, the water system on is down here. We just flip the switch and the propane comes on automatically. Um, I made this sink out of a uh, steam tray, uh, like the commercial kitchen cooking steam trays. Just cut a hole in it, put a drain in it, and uh, made the, a sink that actually would fit in there because I couldn't find a sink that would you know an already made sink that would fit in there it's not majorly glamorous but let me tell you it is super functional no but it's very handy to have running water when you're out on the road uh underneath down here as well uh there's a, uh, a series of valves and things where i can drain our gray water tank and fill up our um uh, drinking water tank from a hose outside and then uh the, like they said the gray water tank drains out underneath as well and then underneath right here, if we happen to get a pinch while, on a pinch while we're out in the road and we need to use the bathroom, I've got a chemical camping toilet that comes up right here and it just slides out. Of course, the door would already be closed and this slides out nicely and you can use the chemical toilet. Um, we try not to use that very often because anybody, any of you that have one of these or own one of these, you know it's kind of a pain to take care of. You have to go dump it and put the chemicals in it and all that stuff. Um, Talk about so, our water tanks real quick. So water tanks we have down here, we have a 45 gallon drinking water tank and a, I believe it's a 16 gallon gray water tank. 
this was where the oxygen tank laid. It laid down underneath right here. And this was our originally a um, aluminum cabinet. I took it out, put it in this cabinet, put in this little trap door right here. That's all. We've got our drinking water and our gray water tank right there. Um, so I'm going to turn this tour over to Sarah and let her tell you a little bit more about what else we have going on in here. Okay. All right. So back in the kitchen, we actually have a 65 quart Pelican cooler um, that Taylor rigged up and it actually drains out the bottom. And the only thing that we ever have draining out is just ice that's melted. Um, and that's just a little, there's just a little valve yeah, on the just side a there. a little valve that drains it out. Um, this also actually doubles as our countertop. So it is a great workspace. We can pull a lot of our food. We do keep um, just some dry goods in here at all times. Uh, if Taylor gets hungry when he um, is at work and doesn't want to necessarily go out and eat, a lot of times there's some stuff that he can just come together real quick. Um, we have some really useful kitchen tools. We have a uh, pressure cooker and just a little um, pot as well and then just knives, forks, different things like that just to make it a little bit easier. I don't do well when I'm hungry on the road and we have kind of learned that when I'm fed that we travel a lot better and so it really <laughs> She gets a little cranky when she's hungry. So it actually helps being able to pull over. Um, I did just hit my head on this just a little bit. Um, the ceiling is six feet tall. I'm 5'10", Taylor's 6'1", so he's just got a little bit of space where he is uh, doing Craning this. my neck a little. Um, just a little bit, but overall it's it's been incredible. So over in this corner, this is actually where we keep our additional blankets, okay? So um, we'll talk about the bed in just one second, but it's extremely helpful. Um, gives you kind of like those creature comforts. Over here, this is kind of our um, overall storage. We've got our toiletries. Um, we've got some aspirin, different things like that. My makeup bag. Um, we've got some extra socks that are always here. This top shelf right here, this is actually what becomes my closet when we're out on the road. And right over here, this is actually what Taylor's closet is. Okay. Um, so, so right here was where the, this originally had a com the commercial in, uh, air conditioner in the truck um, for to keep this back portion air conditioned and heated, but they took it off before they put, put it up for auction. So I put it in just, it's a standard window unit here that uh, I can run off the shore power or the generator, no problem. And uh, that just happens to be some extra space that I put in some plywood box up there and then use it as our closet. Okay, so this vehicle as a whole, there's two seats up in the front, but we have four legal seats in the back, three on the bench, and one right over here in this captain's chair. So if you lift this up, the captain's chair up, this is where we keep our rain gear, extra jackets for the, uh, um, the colder months. It's actually helped us quite a bit. Uh, we went to a flea market a couple weeks ago, and it was much colder than we anticipated, and so we were able to come through the ambulance and say, hey, do we actually have anything? And we did, and it made it so much better. Um, over here, we have just some basic necessities. Um, we've got our sunscreen, our bug spray. We've got our just soaps and hand sanitizers, different things like that. We've got a deck of cards if we get bored. Um, overall, um, this has been an excellent, excellent vehicle. When Taylor said, hey, I'm thinking about getting an ambulance, it was a little terrifying because it's like, are you kidding me? Like this. Can't no, be it, it wasn't. It wasn't. I was thinking about getting an ambulance. I came home with an ambulance, and her original response was, uh, "What did you just do?" Was not pleasant. But after but, I told her, I thought about. After I gave her the idea of a camper, she warmed up a little bit. Absolutely, I have a adventuresome spirit, and I knew that we could absolutely make it work. Um, we have slowly been evolving the process as far as what works, what doesn't, kind of like what Taylor was saying in the tool. Uh, this is not a step. So we realized, hey, we definitely need a mirror. There are different things that just make functioning in it much better. Ideally, what our goal is long term is to purchase a school bus and do a conversion and maybe do a year where we're traveling full time. Um, that's down the road. We don't even have a school bus, but we would love an opportunity to do that. Um, for now, this ambulance is great. It fits in any national park, any state park. It's really stealth. So it's actually been an incredible vehicle. Um, we're going to talk about the bed, and then I'll turn it back to Taylor. So I'm going to actually take the phone. Okay. 
And so this is the bed I built. This was actually originally shelves right here. Um, and so it was shelves starting about right this point right here. And this was all shelves. And then you could still sit some people or lay another patient down on this, this bed seat right here, whatever they were having as an ambulance. So this is just a bed I built here with stuff from Lowe's. And it folds down, the legs flip out. And this is just a, I believe a three inch memory foam topper that I think came from you know, Walmart or something. And uh, works great as a mattress in the back of our camper here. And it's very comfortable. I um, work a couple hours away and work a couple of shifts in a row and uh, spend the night or spend, I actually work nights. So hey, I spend... ha take a seat because I'm having a kind of difficult time seeing you. Okay, so I, I usually will work three shifts in a row. I work nights and then I'll just go find a shady spot during the day and sleep, I sleep right here during the day. And it keeps me from having to do a lot of driving or pay for a hotel and it keeps me able to work at the job I'm working on that uh, I enjoy very much. So a um, couple other things about the ambulance. I don't know if I talked about it or not, but we still have the electrical system that I can run off the batteries in the truck or run off the generator or the shore power. Uh, there are some accessories over here uh, that you uh, are behind Sarah, like uh, suction and oxygen, things of that nature that uh, we don't really ever use, but they're kind of interesting interesting to have and like sarah said it's extremely stealth vehicle we love it i don't know if i'll ever drive anything but an ambulance because it's such a handy vehicle to have like i said it's my daily driver vehicle and my work vehicle for building our shipping container house and um it's just so handy to be able to take all my tools with me load all the stuff back in the back and just be able to close the doors it's not going to get rained on at the end of the day it's not going to get stolen out of the back of my truck and um i don't know if i'll ever drive anything other than an ambulance the one couple of things that we would change is I would like it to be a crew cab because the two-seater front is kind of cumbersome whenever you have more than two people. They have Somebody has to sit back in the back and you can't really have any storage. You know, like when you get in the truck, you can't throw your jacket in the back seat like I normally would if I had a, a bigger truck. Um, I have to, you know, actually get out, come back here, put it back here, and then go back in front. And then, like I said, if we want to take somebody with us on one of our trips that we're going on, you have to sit back here. And it's usually me that sits back here and Sarah will drive um, because it's kind of like, it's kind of like being in a boat, this big bat box back here rocks back and forth and it's lonely as well you can you can be seen from up front on the camera but uh, there's also a phone where I can call up front and talk to the person that's driving but it's just not the same as being in the same vehicle with somebody um, and then also if we ever did happen to you know get another ambulance it'd be great for it to have a pass-through where you can like on the van style ambulance where you can actually walk to the front to the back um, but just on this truck kind of style like this it's not really feasible um, well, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching our uh, tour of our ambulance. We call it the Glambulance, and Sarah likes to call it Glamby the Glambulance. Um, she's good to us. She is so good to us. Good. So be sure and check out our shipping container home build on our channel. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.